Hi guys, some of you are asking me about how I set up Pixieboot on my current net, so I'm recording this video in order to show you how it was done. First, we need to download some files from Plop Linux page. This is the Linux distribution I was using in my previous video. The files that we need to download are in section 3.2. We have here three files. One is the ISO file, that is the main operating system. The second one is the Pixie boot configuration. The third one is also the ISO file, just in another file format. Once these are downloaded, let's go ahead and extract them. Let's start with the Pixie boot configuration. Let's open the second file. We are going to need only the syslinux folder from here. Extracting this package might take quite a while. So we open this folder and copy syslinux. But syslinux should go into tftp boot and plop linux netboot. So we are dragging and dropping into that folder. That's done. Now we have to decide where to put these files on the NAS. I have selected the public file share from my NAS. So we have to copy over the TFTP boot folder and the ISO file. Once this is done, let's go over to the NAS and mount the ISO file as a file share. So we open file station, search for the ISO file, click this icon here and mount as ISO. It will by default take the name of the ISO file. And you just have to click OK. I already mounted the ISO, so it's over on the left side of this window, as you can see. Next, we need to enable the HCP server on the NAS itself. You probably have a DHCP server already on your router. If your router supports server options 66 and 67, you can go ahead and configure it there. 66 would be the boot server host name and 67 would be the boot file name. Remember, if you're going to do this on the NAS itself, you must disable DHCP server on your router, else you would have IP conflicts. Let's click on Add. You probably would have multiple interfaces. I'm going to select a VLAN interface that I created for this testing only. You probably would have to use the LAN interface. So in your case, it, it's probably the LAN interface. In my example, it's going to be a VLAN created on the LAN interface. Next. We have two options here. I'm going with the defaults for now. Okay, we have to define what IP range will this DHCP server serve. In my case, the upper limit is 222. We must define DNS servers. I'm going to use Google's DNS. And now the important settings are hidden, so we have to click more settings. And we have to put the IP address of the TFTP server, which in our case would be the NAS itself. And for boot file name, we are going to use the pixelinux.0 file. So this pixelinux file is under the TFTP boot netboot folder, this one. Okay, we are happy with our settings, let's apply it. And the DHCP server scope will show up. Okay, let's enable TFTP server. So the TFTP server uh, is located in the control panel applications, TFTP server. You just have to enable it by ticking this box. And you have to modify the root directory and point it to the folder that we 
just copy it over to the public share. I encourage you to use logging at first when you want to try this out because logging will really help you troubleshoot if there are issues. So these are the default settings. Now we have to configure some things in the files, configuration files from um, the TFTP boot folder. So we have to go to TFTP boot, uh, plop Linux dash netboot, pxe Linux config. And since we are using uh, Samba shares for publishing this content, let's edit this file. So smb.conf. What you have to do here is to replace the default values that are coming with this configuration. So make sure you put your NASA's IP address and the folder name that was created when you mounted the ISO file. To make sure this path works correctly, is just to take the line out, copy it, put it in an Explorer window, make sure you make, put the right slashes. So instead of slash, we should put backslash and press enter. If you get the content of the folder, you're ready to go. Also, uh, please bear in mind that I have created an unprivileged user that will have access, read access only to this share. So I encourage you to do the same. So do not use your admin or um, privileged account for accessing this share. So the format is username and password separated by columns. Now we are ready to test. You are seeing a virtual machine now booting up using PXE. And if you did your configuration correctly, you will see the screen. There are multiple options on the screen. We are using the Samba one. Let's hit enter and boot. As you can see, the kernel is already loading. If you're seeing this green line, it means that the mount to the public folder was successful. Okay, let's start the graphical user interface by typing start X. And here we are. All working properly. So that would be it. And thank you very much for watching. I am thinking about uh, making another video about Netboot XYZ. That is a really cool uh, Pixie Boot solution that enables you to boot different Linux distributions, install it from the network, or do other kind of troubleshoots via the available tools. So probably I will do that video as well. Thank you for watching. Bye.